What's up? It's your boy Carcino here, and let's talk about it. We all saw The Last Dance, uh, episode eight, where Gary Payton was talking about how they came back into the series because Gary Payton was now guarding Michael Jordan, and that made a difference in the whole the whole situation. Him having Michael Jordan involved. Him on Jordan. That was going to make the difference. That was going to be the turning point. That was going to be what everybody was going to be thinking about. So when that happened, you know, Mike, they're playing it back on the, on the, uh, uh oh, sorry about that. There you go. You get to see it that way in full. <laughs> now, when they play it back and they play it for Mike, you see Mike is laughing. Mike has got a head back laughing at this. Oh, and thank you guys who donated to the Cash App. Yes, Carcino is definitely happy about that. Thank you, sir. Yes, I do appreciate that. Very much so. <laughs> Michael, once they got up 3-0, and he was pushing for that. Michael, when they got up 3-0 on the... Uh, they went up 3-0... On the Seattle Supersonics, they knew they could beat them. After they lost to them, they said, okay, we could beat this team. Michael knew that nobody could guard me on the team. Dennis Rodman has got the whole back line frustrated. From Frank Burkowski, who was supposed to be the team's tough enforcer, he couldn't do anything with Dennis Rodman. Dennis Rodman had him so flushed that it was basically the Dennis Rodman NBA Finals. What he was able to do to them was remarkable. No, because Mike is a theatrical performer. You know, what you've seen a lot with Mike, a lot of this was theatrics. Him and LeBron shared that, uh, that very thing that they have in common. They know that they are on the, plat or the plateau of the NBA, so they're all for the theatrics. Anything that he would do to cause the media a stir, like create a story that he know isn't true, just for the momentum to be built up to get him motivated to go out and play. He played these theatrics. He knew, and the NBA knew, that that game, would, game six, was going to be on Father's Day. That was a tough day for Mike, but he wanted to win the championship in Chicago at home on Father's Day. So when they were up 3-0, he literally played, laid back in those two games in Seattle. He dogged those two games. He knew like hell, Seattle cannot beat them four straight. <laughs> it's not going to happen. They could have swept them.
They could have swept him. Mike didn't want to sweep him. Mike wanted to win on Father's Day in Chicago. He wanted to win that day. He wanted to win it for his father for Father's Day in Chicago. It was set up to go that way, and that's the way Mike wanted it. The NBA was not going to let Michael Jordan lose that game. Yeah, he dogged those games. Michael Jordan dogged those games. He didn't want to win. He did not tap into overdrive. They scored 79 points in game five. 79 points. And it's like, oh, the Bulls have run out of gas. They didn't run out of gas. The team knew what Mike wanted to do. Mike wanted to win that in Chicago on Father's Day. And Gary Payton was laughing. <laughs> I mean, he got Mike laughing because Mike know. That's why Mike's laughing so hard. Mike's like, this has nothing to do with the glove. <laughs> he really thought his defense was holding me down. <laughs> I was saving it for that game. And he was so emotionally caught up in the game. He could not settle down. He couldn't settle down. He couldn't get a shot to go in. He was terrible that game. But it didn't matter because the Bulls was just beating them anyway. There was nothing they could do. The refs weren't going to let them win that game. There was nothing they could do. They were defeated. Yeah, because that was his nerves. It was Father's Day. It was a very distracting day for Mike. He couldn't really focus. He couldn't get a shot to go. He played basically terrible, but the whole team played better than Seattle. So, and the refs weren't going to let Seattle get in the game at all. They just whistled them flat out of the game. They were not going to, the NBA wanted this storyline to play out the way it did. Dick Ebersol, baby, this is what he does. This was theater. Michael Jordan laying on the floor crying. And they got the cameraman following Michael Jordan only, you know, while he laying on the floor and they're taking the pictures while he's crying. This is Dick Embersall, man. This is theater. I'm not saying Mike didn't have real tears. He did. It was emotional for him. But they let they could have blocked the cameras from letting that happened like that they wanted that shot that's the money shot mike laying on the floor and they taking pictures around mike while he's having an emotional moment oh they wanted that that shot was everywhere that was the cover of the newspapers all around the globe mike holding on to a basketball crying thinking about his daddy But I'm here to inform you guys who probably wasn't born when that happened, what actually took place. Michael Jordan lost games four and five on purpose. He dogged those games. He did not want to win. He was saving it for Father's Day. That's why he was laughing so hard. That's why he's throwing his head back laughing because he know this had nothing to do with Gary Payton's defense. <laughs> That's why he's laughing like, ha, 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 the glove. I had no problems with the glove. <laughs> the glove. You see, but that's the narrative they, they feed into your head. See? You see? When you listen to Sino, you get the truth.
I'm quite sure they got games four and five on YouTube. Go watch them. See if Michael Jordan was really trying to win those games. <laughs> go see if he was really trying to go out and win the championship. Go. Tell me what you come back with. Gary Payton wasn't trash, but he couldn't guard Michael Jordan. He was a great defensive player, but him guarding Michael Jordan for an entire game? And that to be the to make the difference of the game? No. The game came down to a couple of scenarios. Seattle didn't know how to win. They know how to win regular season games. They they didn't know how to win at all. They didn't have the potential. He's too small for Mike. I mean, you got to know defense on Mike. This is why Joe Dumars was so efficient against guarding Michael Jordan. He was able to use his team, you know, to put Michael in positions where the team would have to help out. Joe was able to stay with Mike and stay under his chest when they say stay under the numbers. When you can stay in the middle of Michael Jordan's chest and not be on the left or the right of him. And if you are on the left or right of him, you know you got help because you're leading them to where you want him to go. And you're making him uncomfortable. That's what Joe Dumars used to do to Michael Jordan back in the 80s and 90s. He had a system of guarding Michael to make Michael uncomfortable. Plus, he put pressure on Michael on the offensive end, too, because he could score. I mean, people act like Joe Dumars wasn't putting 20-plus up on Michael Jordan. When Jordan was guarding. Him. See, nobody remembers that. It's not like Jordan was shutting down Joe Dumas. He wasn't. Joe was giving him the business on the other end. So he had to work guarding Joe Dumas, running around guarding him. Then, on top of that, he's got to be Michael Jordan. Then they'll switch and give him Dennis Rodman. So Rodman will be guarding Mike. That's why Mike says, I know how Dennis is as a defender. Because Dennis, no, y'all just think of Dennis as this guy who beats up on people and beat up on Scottie Pippen for a living. No, <laughs> Dennis was the defensive player of the year. Rebounding champion, defensive stopper. He guarded all the athletic players that was on the court and could shut them down. He could shut down Shaq. Michael know what Dennis is, so he that's why he's like, I and Dennis, I played against Dennis. I know what Dennis is. <laughs> yeah, I want to play with Dennis.
So anybody who don't believe me, I'm quite sure with YouTube, they have these games on YouTube. And you can see the Bulls kind of like dogging it. Letting Seattle have their little moment in Seattle for their fans. And they could have went, they could have got the sweep if they really wanted to go out and get the sweep. Mike wanted to win this on Father's Day for his dad. They saw the schedule. They saw game, game six was in Chicago on Father's Day. Mike wanted to get up on this team 3-0. And he went after Seattle. Well, I mean, went after him. He wanted to get up big. Once they got up 3-zip, Mike knew. All right, they can have these two. We're going to save it. Don't go crazy. When we go to Chicago, we'll put this thing to bed. <laughs> we'll put it to bed when we get to Chicago on Father's Day. The game was never close on Father's Day. They were not going to let Michael Jordan lose on Father's Day. Too much theater. Yeah, it did. And it got people going to my old videos because they were, Sino, you right. Sino, you was right about Scotty. Sino, you was right about... <laughs> it's funny how the documentary come out and it changes everybody's perspective immediately of people. I'm like, how many times have I told people about that exact story and I said it the exact same way they showed it? I said it the exact same way. I will elude. What's up, bro? Thanks for your stream, lad, bro. I appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the like button, folks. Yep, I was right. <laughs> I told y'all, Tony Kukos was winning all those games at the buzzer. How many times was I telling people that? I'm like, Tony was winning about his rookie year in the NBA. I think he probably would have been or oh, was about to win rookie of the year. He would come off the bench, Tony Kukos would hit a game-winning shot and win these games. He did about three, four of them that year. So for Phil to go to Tony in the clutch only made sense. Teams was going to be expecting Scotty to shoot it. They weren't going to expect Tony. And Tony's the one that been winning all the games at the buzzer. Scotty, that's not your job. Scotty is not a let me win this game at the buzzer guy. You the facilitator of the team. That was your role. But he was mad because he thought he was bigger than the game. Oh, you'd have never said this to Michael. That's why he said, I think I'd have did the same exact thing I did back then. Of course you would. <laughs> but that's your Scotty Pippen. Not today. Everybody hates Scotty Pippen. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. People are well, something else, ain't they? They never disappoint. I told you about Scotty Pippen years ago. Y'all didn't want to believe me. 
He's a quitter. He you didn't know when Mike left, Scotty was the man. Scotty, I'm like, yeah, y'all always go to the 94 season, but y'all seem to forget Scotty quit on y'all. And I always tell y'all that. <laughs> Quit on the team, and the team had to go out there, and then Tony hit it and hit the game winner anyway to prove Phil knew what the hell he was talking about <laughs> when he drew up the damn play. I know, Scotty, and, and, and why you think he went to LeBron, saying LeBron is better? They're the same type of player. They're they're baby people. They can, that's why they said when Michael was gone, everybody was nice. Scotty was different. Scotty picked us up. He pat us on the back. We like Scotty. Yeah, you like Scotty leadership, and what did he lead you to? Nothing. You have no brass rings messing around with Scotty. <laughs> But you're going to have a good time. I want to win. Now, that's one thing about Mike I understand. Because Isaiah Thomas has that same mentality. Kobe Bryant has that mentality. I have that mentality. Do you think I'm going to be on a team that's going to dog it? This is why I didn't play on my high school basketball team. This is why I didn't play on the high school football team. I was much better at football than I was basketball. I could play cornerback, wide receiver, and basically any position out there. I could catch anything. I had speed. I had the hands. I could do whatever I want out there. My only problem was this. <clears throat> <clears throat> my mentality I expect to win at no way do I see myself losing and if we lose to somebody that's inferior this is pickup games we ain't even getting paid for I'm ready to destroy my whole team So I already know how my competitive nature is. It comes from my uncle. My older uncle battling him. That Me and him, we, we both have that same fire. My other uncle, he don't have it like that. He love to compete, but he don't have it like that. My oldest uncle, me and him. I'm the oldest grandchild. He's the oldest uncle. Me and him would go like two Clash of the Titans. Bam! Going back and forth. Every sport with his softball, baseball, volleyball. We ran everybody on the family off the volleyball court because it's me and him playing one-on-one. -on -one. Everybody like, look, y'all just go. Y'all don't even let us hit the ball. We, <laughs> we are competitive. It is in our blood. <laughs> we, are, we are way past the borderline of competitiveness. You guys think I go hard on YouTube battling people and the, the academics and meek me? Why do you think that happened? Everybody else would have let that go. I'm competitive. I, I My temper level would get up to the point. Now I just like, you know what? I should have let that go. <laughs> me, I have, a, I have a competitive don't cross, don't feed the animals thing. <laughs> <laughs> that nature, that thing never goes away. So the LeBron James thing, oh, no. You should have never brought that in this house. <laughs> that aggression will not stand. Michael Jordan will never be, <laughs> never be second to a guy like that. No. Yeah, my uncle ain't a Sagittarius, and he the same way, if not worse. He's the oldest. He's a control freak. 
So for him, I get it. For me, it's entirely different. So Mike looking at that laughing at Gary because he know I lost them two games because I didn't care about them. I dogged those two games. I'm resting up. We up three zip. I'm resting up for the finale. If I played anybody in basketball, if I accepted the challenge to play you, I never went in with the mentality of, I just hope I score. <laughs> you know, we played this team. They thought they they were so good, and the guy on our team, man, I just hope I I just hope I hit a basket. I said, you just hope you hit a basket. You just hope you hit a basket. You better hit a basket. Matter of fact. Run. You, you you running today? Man, yeah. You taking his spot. <laughs> you not running on my team. Because I swear to God, if you go out there and dog it, you're going to have to deal with me. That's going to be 10 times worse than battling them. Because we're going to have another battle after the game's over if we lose. Because now if we lose, I'm thinking about you. You didn't do your job. I know I'm going to do mine. That's the thing with me. I'm not going to cost us the game. <laughs> if I'm not scoring offensively, defensively, I'm not going to lose us the game. We played a best of 64 tournament in a three-on-three. -three. We basically got a March Madness going on. It happens once a year. We're doing this tournament. I got my team ready. I have my alternate. The previous year, we got robbed out of the tournament, and I was ready to just go nuts. We didn't even lose. Now, the way the rules were then, the year that we got robbed, they didn't even have, it wasn't 64 teams. It was uh, the year we got robbed, they had um, a whole list of other people there. But nobody there had on, like, it wasn't as big as it was the, the next year when we went back and it was like, we got a team of 64. I'm like, 64 teams? Because they told us it was like a company thing. and We were playing against the other companies. And they could say, you guys can have as many teams as you want going. So it, each from one, one uh, store. So we had like, what, three teams from our store go? And this one team, they had like four teams. They were like an NBA team. These dudes played together. I'm like, all right, well, we're going we gonna to see what it is. Well, I want to play them anyway. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, I, I want to play those guys over there. I, I'm ready. I, I hope we play them next. I want them beat. So we went through the soft, you know, teams before then. But the year we got robbed, we, was, we were winning the game. The team I had was weak that year anyway. Let me just say that. But still, we were good enough to beat those guys that we beat. We beat them so bad. The guys who had the team that was, like, with us, they got beat before. And they was like, man, we lost. But, uh, you know, can we be alternates? I'm like, yeah, you guys can be the alternates. Y'all can come in the game. They didn't even do nothing. They didn't even score a basket. They just got to run around. And then after we won, they go go up and complain and say, well, they had a lot of other players on their team. And the guy's like, hey, wait a minute. And our general manager was on the council. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, well, let's just play the game over. If they think that that's the case, I'm like, we're getting robbed. We blew them out. This team can't beat us. They was like, yeah, well, we, we got to advance them because – you guys, they were alternates. There's no rule saying that these guys couldn't have been our alternates. You don't even have a rule in place. He's like, yeah, but they're complaining. And the guy's like, hey, I'm sorry, dude. I just said it because you guys had so many. I'm like, dude, you know these damn players didn't have nothing to do with us beating you. We was beating y'all by like 20. Y'all only had one basket y'all scored the whole damn game. And now you're trying to get us disqualified? They had to get me out of there. They had to get me out of there. 
So I'm like, they was like, look, this game is for goodwill. I don't care about nobody will. When you rob something from me, a bunch of inferior basketball players like this, and then he going to try to come up to explain to me, oh, I'm sorry, dude, I ain't trying to get you guys disqualified. I'm like, man, I'll knock your teeth down your throat. I'm getting mad now thinking about it. I had to wait a whole nother year to come back. Oh, and I was looking for them. It was like I was counting the days till we came back. Oh, now I got a real team. <laughs> I got an Arabian guy named Saeed who's six foot four, who catches alley-oops and can take you off the dribble. I got my man Mike over here who slashes like Scottie Pippen. You got me running the point in the two-guard position. Oh, we finna run the table. And then the one guy who was like, man, he want to be our alternate. We didn't even need an alternate. I'm like, we don't need an alternate. We don't need nothing. We got everything we need right here. We going to run this three on three. This dude comes on there, begs to be on my doggone team. I let him on as an alternate. He is like, I'm like, dude, you might not even get a chance to play some of the games. That's all right, man. I'm good. I just want to play. Uh, just be on the team. I'm like, all right, he played, got in the game. I let him come in for a couple of plays and play. I'm like, dude, you the alternate. The alternate. He starts complaining. We make it to the final four. The final four. We beat everybody. That dude team, they didn't even get, I didn't get my chance to get my revenge on them because he was already eliminated. They were like, it was 64 teams. The year before that, you could lose up to two games. This year, oh gosh, this year, one game and you're out. It's the 64 teams, so we ain't got time. We get to the final four, we play our game, and this doggone inferior basketball team beats us. Whoo! This inferior team beat us because, one, I can't blame my two guys, Sae and Mike, but it got to a situation where we were in a fight where some guys that were athletic like them, they were taking away what they like to do. So they start forcing it. And I was like, look, calm down. You guys are forcing it. Because you think in championship and all that. Stay in the moment. Do what you got to do. Defensively, offensively, things will come. We'll create it off the defense. Just focus. They're going to screw it up. They're trying to run flawless offense and stop you from doing what you do. This is how we're going to do. You guys are trying to force shots you know you shouldn't take. Make the extra pass. It's all good. You're going to get what you're going to get. I have to run and orchestrate the team to get us focused because we're all distracted on trying to be the star. And I'm like, I'm not trying to be the star. I should take the game over. But now I got to come out here offensively and put some points up because my teammates, the guys who I'm supposed to get points to, they can't get off because these guys are playing them so tight. So I'm sitting there and I'm getting the points off and I'm scoring and next thing you know, I'm scoring buckets. This guy ain't really scoring at all. They got, he's looking to facilitate to them. But now we're like trading baskets. We need to get on a run. So all of a sudden, I said, this guy's over here with the stink face. Like he ain't playing today. Like he ain't getting enough tick to play. So I said, all right, man, I'm going to let him come in and play. We're going to sub out. So I told him what the game plan was. He comes in there and he starts scoring. He comes in and score. Yeah. Then it's once you score. <clears throat> you know, he's like, he's scoring a bucket and then they'll come back and the guy that 
I was guarding that he's now guarding, he's now being offensive. And he's scoring on him. And now the game is getting out of hand. I'm like, now nah, I got to get back in the game. I'm like, I got to come back in. He's like, what? Why are you taking me out? I'm scoring, man. He just got mad because I was scoring, man. And now, now and then he's going to take me out the game. Dude, it doesn't make sense if you're scoring and the guy that's guarding you is scoring too. <laughs> We're behind. He can trade baskets all he wants with you. So your scoring don't mean anything if you ain't playing no damn defense. That's why I took you up out the game. One, I'm the captain. It's my goddamn team. <laughs> There's no debates. So, yeah, he, he really, whew, he really got on my damn nerves. So I understand this is why I did not play professional and organized sports because I would have been like that times 30 because it's not going to be me. Anybody who played pickup basketball with me automatically knows don't mess with him. <laughs> he ain't nice. He ain't polite. <laughs> my own cousin had to get yelled at. He ain't want to be on my team. Because I don't like to lose at nothing. My best friend, I beat him like 40 some times in a row. He won one game against me and thought he figured me out. Do you know it was killing him? I was making him better. I'm like, dude, I'm making you better. You just don't see it. Every time I'm beating you, your drive. You when he wouldn't even let me drive him home. He walked all the way to the crib. He walked all the way to the crib. That's how mad he was every time I beat him. He'll pick his five. We'll play a five on five. I know his team is going to lose. Because he don't know how to inspire his team and rally them to play above what they play. The players he didn't want to pick, I would always put on my team and they would perform. Because I will instill confidence in him. He just yells. He just spazzes out. <laughs> He's from Compton, California. So that's that was his attitude. <laughs> and he would just lash out at them. And I would laugh because everybody had to be motivated differently. I knew me against him, we're going to basically cross each other out. But I'm better. So... <laughs> I'm a better defender, and I know I can score whenever I want. Now, that's the difference. Him, he can't score whenever he wants, and he knows I'm a much better defender on him than he, he is on me. Now, the main problem was this. When it came down to who else was on the team, and giving the ball up. If they made a mistake, it was the end of the world explosion. If my guys made a mistake, I expected them to, but I always pumped them up because I knew that I was getting to him. We had this white guy on our team named Owen. He had cat eyes, like cat blue eyes. And he used to could shoot, like jump shoot, jump shooter. He was like John Paxson. So I played to his strengths. He likes to catch and shoot. He's a catch-and-shoot guy. He's not a guy that's going to dribble a lot and pull up and shoot. If you play him like that, he ain't going to win. So I knew what his strengths were, so I knew how to get him the ball. I said, you're a catch-and-shoot guy. Keep running around that curve, and when you come around that curve, I'm going to swing you that ball, and you catch, and you just pull up and shoot. Don't even think about passing. He was like, all right. And he traded me the guy. He's, I'm like, look, let's trade. I'll take him. Good, because he a bum. I'm like, good. I'm sorry. You on my team now. <laughs> I'm like, he don't even realize the guy I gave him is going to cripple his whole team. Because I'm like, he can't guard you. Can't guard you. It's just that he don't know how you play. He don't know to give you the ball when you come off these curls. 
That's how you play. That's how you score. And sure enough, that dude with the cat eyes on hit about five, six straight jump shots coming off curls. I'm, <laughs> I was just waiting on him to come around the curl. He'll pull up. Bam! <laughs> pull up. Bam! He was feeling it. I was just laughing because I know how he plays. I was like, see? Then I took Spanky, an eighth grader. I said, let me take Spank on my team. I bet Spank was like my little brother. I said, I'm going to say Spank had a mouth on him, too. That's one thing I liked about Spank. He had that mouthpiece. He ain't take nothing from nobody. Man, I do it myself. Man, you ain't nobody. A little bitty dude. I like, I like him. Spank, you on my team. <laughs> and he was like my little brother. Plus, I banged his sister. But that's, a, that, that's neither here nor there. <laughs> he was like my little brother. <laughs> <laughs> that was scratch that part off <laughs> he was like my little brother <laughs> so I always looked out for Spain so the whole thing was this Spank and him always clashed because Spank didn't like his mouth and if those two was on the same team, they was going to either fight or whatever. So I was like, look, Spank, Spank on my team. Spanky had this thing he do where he always do a spin move and go over the layup. Spanky was a little bitty dude, but he had gigantic hands. He could palm a basketball and everything. So I took this eighth grader, put him on my team, <laughs> and we went all the way <laughs> into this game. And I knew, I said, Spank, when I get you, go into the paint. Right there near the free throw line. I'm going to come cut to down the lane. I'm going to drop the ball off to you. He's going to still think I got it. I'm going to throw it behind my back with my, I was explaining it, play by play, what was going to happen. I'm, I'm going to drive with my left hand. I'm going to throw the pass back to you right there in the middle. I'm going to keep driving. I'm not even going to look at you. I was like, I'm going to keep driving. I'm going to bounce that ball with my left, and I'm going to throw it directly to you, and I'm going to keep driving, looking at the basket. He's going to still think I got it. He's going to follow me. When I get you the ball, use your spanky spin. <laughs> and we called it the spanky spin. He hit that spin move and laid it up on him, kept doing the spin move. I dropped that ball off the spanky spin. That's all we called it. Use the spanky spin, baby. Use that spanky spin. Spanky spin, man. He used that spin move about six, seven times in a row when we was scoring, and he couldn't stop running his mouth. And him and my boy was about to fight. <laughs> I, he's like, you know what, Spanky? You say one more word to me. I don't care how old you is. I'm going to punch you in your mouth. <laughs> 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 oh man so i mean those were the great games and the wars we played on the basketball court so a lebron james coming out there thinking he could do something to me on a basketball court back then he was in trouble i don't care what size he was and freight train and all that nonsense had he came up against me there's no way he would have been able to stop me offensively, one. His athleticism would have definitely gave, gave him some advantages of high flying, but you can't high fly dunk on somebody who right in your chest defensively. And that's just the truth, Ruth. <laughs> 